So my name's Dan Hines, uh, and I work for DC Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we're in Washington, DC right now, northeast uh, section of the city. And behind me, you'll see a set of three townhomes being built to passive house standards for three low-income families. These three are getting very close to finish. In a few minutes, we'll walk around and take a look at another set of three that are going to be uh, almost identical to this build. Uh, they're just a little bit farther behind. behind. So they're more at the framing stage of uh, construction. For this project, when we did our, our last blower door right before drywall, we got to 0.2 uh, ACH, uh, which is a great number for us. Uh, we we're very happy with that. Um, and that makes us very confident that when we get our final blower door here, we'll meet the air tightness level that we need to. So you can see the state that we're at now is the primary air barrier. Our glass mat here is fully taped off. Uh, we did that with a group of about 10 or 15 volunteers uh, a week or two ago uh, when the weather was a little bit nicer. Um, and just went along and taped every seam uh, of the walls going all the way around and the roof. Uh, the plywood of the roof is taped in just the same manner. The wall is a structural 2 by 4 wall um, that's then sheathed with glass mat uh, sheathing. And then we taped all the seams uh, with Tescon, uh, either Vanna or Profil tape. Um, and then on the outside of this wall, we'll end up hanging 9.5 inch TGIs on the wall to make a 9.5 uh, inch deep cavity that'll get dense packed with cellulose. Um, that cavity is wrapped with uh, Solitex Mento Plus. Um, and then we did a double fur stripping, so uh, horizontal fur strips every two feet, and then uh, vertical fur strips every two feet to then attach our siding to. The last bit of air sealing that needs to happen, we're pretty much airtight, all, coming all the way down our sheathing, and the uh, air seal at the slab uh, will be a bead of uh, Contiga HF running all the way around uh, the slab the, underneath this plastic and that'll seal this plastic that runs underneath our 2x4 wall uh, to the slab and then we'll bring our Solitex Mento Plus along and tape that to this plastic um, and then we'll be able to start putting the eye joist in and run that Solitex all the way up uh, on the outside of the eye joist. Um, so once we get that bead of Contiga down uh, we will be, then be able to do our blower door on the inside and get a real good air tightness quantity for uh, our primary air barrier. Once we can you know, put the last couple finishing touches on our air seal here, we'll get a blower door test to get a, a primary, a first number to make sure that our primary air barrier is fully airtight. Then we'll cut in all the windows and doors and everything like that, put those all in, tape those all off, make sure they're air sealed, and then we'll do another blower door to test, uh, to test the air tightness at that point. And we'll be able to compare those numbers to make sure that, you know, if, if we were as tight as we needed to be before the windows got in, we should be as tight as we need to be, uh, or very close to that, um, after the windows are in, so that we can, kind of helps us to troubleshoot where there's problems in our air barrier. Um, once that's all done, We'll um, finish all the eye joists, do all the uh, Solitex, Mento Plus, tape all that off, and do all of our air penetrations, our plumbing, electrical, HVAC, seal all those, and then we'll get another blower door um, before we put the drywall up. Because once the drywall up, it's a lot harder for someone to uh, break that air barrier. It's protected. So if we hit that number at that point, um, then I'll feel pretty good about hitting the air tightness level we have to hit um, at final. Interesting parts about this specific unit is you can see we back up against uh, a neighbor's property on one side. So there's about 20 feet of the structure that is a couple inches from our neighbor. So we couldn't obviously get, once that wall was stood, we couldn't get behind on the other side of the wall to tape off all the sheathing, put the eye joists on and, and tape uh, all the wrap. So you can kind of see our wrap protruding from the side there. We built that 20 feet of that structure as a balloon wall. So we built the entire structure laying on the ground, uh, going about 26 feet up and 20 feet wide. Um, and then it ends up being you know, over a foot thick. And then we had a crane come in uh, and we hooked chains all the way through the structural part of it and used the crane to pick it and pull it 
and drop it right where it needs to go. You can see this is the part where we had to build the parapet um, before putting the wall up, kind of build it all as one thing and then uh, use a crane to stand it. So from here out, the parapet, when we put the exterior all eye joists on, will get continued all the way to the front corner and then down along the front. Um, so when we put our cellulose in, once we sheathe the back part of this wall, they'll be able to just cut a hole up here in the top and uh, put their tube all the way down to the bottom and fill that cavity all the way up with insulation. So this is just a temporary roofing membrane that we put down just to keep it dry through the winter. The final roof assembly will be eight and a half inches of polyiso um, and then a TPO. You can see our plywood is all taped all along the seams. And here at the edge where there's an overhang, we took that tape and wrapped it all the way around the edge to the underside so that before we get uh, the overhang on, we can make sure that that seam is air sealed all the way back to the framing. So kind of looking at the back of the house here, uh, a couple of key things to point out. You'll see up top that uh, our uh, intake and exhaust from our ERV, uh, those are the registers right there. The large Comfo tube, uh, and that's air sealed using gaskets provided by 475 and then taped off with uh, Tescon tape. So that worked really well, um, was very easy uh, for myself and uh, our volunteers to work with. This is our uh, HVAC unit. It's a small Mitsubishi that will do all the heating and cooling for the entire house. And you can see um, the line sets and the electrical and condensate lines all coming out from one point. That was probably the trickiest of uh, our penetrations to air seal. We put a, a sleeve that goes through the um, dense packed cellulose cavity uh, and then stops at our glass mat. And we taped that PVC to our uh, Solitex Mento Plus and to our sheathing. But then at the glass mat sheathing, I made uh, individual holes for each line set and electrical wire and the condensate line and ran them all through as individual uh, uh, penetrations so that I could air seal them in individually on the inside edge of that uh, glass mat. Uh, the Roflex gaskets provided by 475, they worked really well. Uh, both the bigger black stretchy ones that go right over and then get taped on the sides and then the smaller ones that already have uh, kind of the adhesive to go on and work with more of the electrical uh, penetrations. Those all worked really well. We used them on both the Mento uh, and on our glass mat primary air barrier. Um, so looking at our windows and doors, um, they uh, are all provided by uh, Clearwall out of Northern Ireland. Um, all the windows and doors for uh, all six of our passive units. Um, and the doors kind of operate very much like the windows. They're just a little bit bigger and heavier. Uh, triple panes uh, with multiple gaskets to get the uh, air seal that we need. And then those doors were all taped off with uh, Tescon tape to get the air seal at the frames. Somebody might ask, why spend the extra time and money to uh, build a house, a passive house like this? It's really kind of a no-brainer for Habitat. Um, if we can find the money and the know-how to do a building like this, it really makes sense for our homeowners because we want to make sure that, yeah, we're providing uh, a affordable home for uh, people in need, but that only makes sense if they're really going to be able to f afford that home for the life for their lifetime in it. We're able to you know, build a house like this that's really airtight, super insulated, um, that's gonna really drive down their energy costs to allow their, uh, our homeowners to have a little bit more predictable bills throughout a year, be able to send their kids to um, you know, play soccer or um, do all the ki kind of things that people wanna do with their families. Uh, makes it much better if they know exactly what their payments every, every month are going to be. Um, and building a house like this allows us to give that to our homeowners.